Now then, lads, welcome back. Premium tanks, something that Enlisted has many of, from panthers in cosplay to reskins from the old campaign system to tanks that should have been in the game to begin with. There are a plethora to choose from, but after being recommended to try a certain tank, I decided to give it a go and now really wish I hadn't. However, today I think that that tank I was recommended might just be the worst tank in the game. But what is the worst one in the game, in my opinion? Well, you can read, right? I, I mean, you clicked on the video. It's the catchy. And I believe it is not just Japan's worst tank, but the worst one in the whole game. In my opinion, of course. So, first, what is the catchy? Well, it's a premium tier 2 amphibious tank that was added along with the American LVT when Japan was first added. However, the catchy seems to almost be designed to get stuck on everything and do its best to cosplay a naval destroyer as hard as it can. However, in a game designed for infantry combat, the catchy is a uh, kind of next to useless, and so to break down why I believe this, I thought I can break it into three sections from its best abilities to its worst abilities, and those are its gun, its survivability, and its mobility. And by going through these three points, I can bring up why the catchy sucks, and why I think it really is as bad as I'm making it out to be. The gun for the catchy is, in theory, at least not that bad. It is easily the best part of the tank armed with the 47mm AT cannon. You also get 60 rounds of both AP HE and HE, which is actually the same amount as the Chiha. However, unlike the Chiha, this gun is much more designed for anti-tank purposes, which it actually does live up to against the tanks that this thing is fighting with. It can deal with pretty much all the American threats up until the Sherman, which is quite good. The problem for me, however, is that it is only good when compared to Tier 1 tanks and other Tier 2 premiums, which also have the same cannon in the Japanese tree. Since the Kachi is Tier 2, it means the other tanks of its tier, which are the Hoai and the Chinu 1, both have more capable cannons, the Hoai being better at dealing with infantry and the Chi Nu 1 being better at dealing with tanks. And those tanks are free. Um, sure, they aren't perfect, but they're much better than the Kachi. It also does lack a machine gun, which isn't something I would usually complain about with a Japanese tank, but since both of the other tanks with the 47mm have a bow machine gun, I think it is fair to whine about it. Also, it does technically have a machine gun. Assuming this is the same tank from War Thunder, the catchy there can have the pontoons removed, allowing the use of the machine gun, but you can't do that in, in Enlisted. Yay. So sure, technically it has a machine gun, but it is absolutely unusable and has no ammo. So, it can only use the 47mm against infantry. And although it isn't a bad round, it has a similar problem to a lot of low caliber HE rounds, which is that you have to be quite accurate with the gun to score kills. Which, sure, it isn't too bad, but sometimes it does feel quite dumb when you're trying to get kills in a large group, as the explosive mass is not enough to kill them out in the open, which the Hoai doesn't actually have to worry about because it's a bigger gun and a howitzer and better. So overall, the gun is good, especially against tanks, but it is underpowered when compared to the free tanks Japan has in the same tier, and especially when compared to the Hoai. But don't worry folks, it's only about to get worse from here. The survivability of the Kachi is something that is kind of infuriating. Firstly, this thing is huge, like, screw the idea of the M3 Lee being a coffin for Seven Brothers, this thing is the real coffin. But aside from the size, there really is only one advantage that comes of it, which is the fact that, since you are a bit taller, you can shoot over pieces of cover that you couldn't before. But the size does have one major drawback, in the fact that you're a giant target for AT gunners, anyone brave enough with a dynamite pack, tanks, 
and close air support, which will screw you over, because, you know, you just happen to be the size of a torpedo boat. But that's not even the worst part about it. The cupola is really high up, and also incredibly zoomed in, so your blind spots are almost comedically exaggerated because they are huge! This means that people can sneak up to you without any effort and flank you like it's nothing, and I will get back and complain about those viewports later. The only saving grace about the survivability of the catchy is the fact that you have seven crew. This does give you a better chance of staffing the three main seats of a tank after an encounter, which I will admit is nice, but I wouldn't argue, you know, it's better. I mean, this does mean that, like, ideally you can survive longer, but, you know, it's not like the armor's gonna help much, since... Your armour is mainly 4mm of frontal armour when they get through the whole 4mm of the front pontoon, and about 20mm of side armour which is combined of two pieces of 10mm. So although you got a lot of spaced armour, that's not going to do much to stop most tank shells. So overall the Kachi has, it's not bad armour, it's decent armour, and it is technically spaced armour which has advantages against things such as machine guns, but overall, the survivability is low just because you're giant. I mean, you are literally a torpedo boat on tracks. Like, how are you not going to draw in attention? It's like you're asking to die. But, yeah. So overall, survivability? It's not great. And now, mobility. Oh god, where the hell do you start with this? Well, okay, I'm gonna break this into three sections. There are three problems with mobility. The size, the viewports, and the amphibious nature thing. Which is, you know, how it kind of floats, and how stable it is in the water. We'll get to it. The main drawback of the catchy, and the first point, is the size. Which I have gone over in survivability, but I think it's got a different effect on mobility. And that's the fact that it's just really hard to drive this thing. I mean, it's huge. Which means that most of the time... It's actually difficult to see where you're going. Um, this combines with the fact that when the tank moves the slightest bit up, your whole viewport gets blinded by the front pontoon, and you can't see anything in front of you. And um, that is really one of the big problems here. Because of its size of that first front pontoon, it means that your tank's depression angle is absolutely killed, because you can barely aim down in front of you. And along with that, the other problems that come with the pontoons, such as, you know, the fact that now you've got to go to your side, that also causes nothing but problems. Anyway, the next problem that I have of it are the viewports, which, aside from the main problem of not being very aimable, there are other problems. The cupola is incredibly high up, and is probably most likely the highest in the game, though I haven't checked that, but I'd still believe it. And the gun is also high up too, but that's less of a problem as you can shoot over cover. But the one of the bigger problems I have is that it is hard to drive the thing from the cupola, because not only are you being blinded by the front pontoon, you're also so high up, it kind of becomes hard to judge what's to the side of you, which isn't as much of a big problem you'd have with the other large tanks in the game, with Capolas like, say, the Tiger II or the IS-2. So overall, the viewports are crap for driving around, and you have to spend most of the time in the driver's one, which isn't actually where the driver's one will be, I'm fairly certain it is just a camera on the front of the first pontoon, which is kind of funny, really. But, you know, that's not the real problem with mobility. The real problem is its fun little quirk called amphibian nature, which is essentially the only reason anyone would want to buy this thing. Now, if I'm being honest, I didn't really try to use it too much in the water for two main reasons. One, actually aiming and being in the water is like hell, because... 
even when you're just staying still, the bobbing is ridiculous. It makes it incredibly hard to aim with a weapon that you have to be accurate to get kills with, unless you are aiming at a tank. And most of the time when you're in the water, you can't really see tanks. Brilliant. Um, but you've also got to deal with the fact that, you know, um, driving there in the first place would be a miracle if you could actually see where you're going. And the second reason is there is no water in the game which gives you an advantage at all that you couldn't get from Grey Zone camping. And this is my biggest problem with the catchy. Because of its size, because of how big it is, you can't go through those small rivers or those shortcuts through the water, which makes being amphibious almost worth it. Because it's cancelled out by the fact that you're huge, which means you get stuck on everything, and you get stuck on the coral in the water, you get stuck on, like, the things coming out of the beach, and you can't even see what you're stuck on at the end of the day, because you're so high up, you can't, you have no idea what's happening. The only reason that you'd use this thing in its amphibious nature is if you're going to try and grey zone camp in the middle of the sea, which is the worst possible place to grey zone camp, because it's the sea, and I don't know if you've seen the sea recently, guys, but there's not much cover in the sea. And so it is horrific as an idea. So overall, the mobility is crap, and the amphibious quirk is pointless. It's, it's, it's like completely pointless with the current map design in the game. So overall, wow, this tank sounds like a pain in the ass. So overall... That's the catchy. The worst premium nape tank in the game. In my opinion, at least. However, I don't want to keep it completely negative here. I actually want to give my thoughts on one thing that I think could actually fix the catchy and most of its problems. And it's a fairly simple fix. Allow me to remove the pontoons. That way, I can just deploy in, get rid of the pontoons, and just use it as a regular, slightly up-armored Chiha Kai. And this would pretty much get rid of a lot of my problems with it. Sure, it would still be quite tall, but you'd have the clear frontal um, viewpoints, and you'd have access to a machine gun. And I actually like that idea. It's just, I wouldn't hold your breath on Dark Flow paying attention to that. I doubt the uh, catchy is at the top of their minds for fixing tanks. So, overall... I hated this, and never want to use this tank again. So, uh, thank you for watching uh, this rant, I, I appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you later. Until next time then, lads. Goodbye.